Now I wanted to talk about the best mock scrape scent that you can apply or that you should be using. It's interesting, I'll, I'll give you a hint and we'll talk about this later, but it's free. But first, let's dive into why is this buck making a scrape in the first place? What do they actually do? Well, a scrape, you know, a scrape signifies that they're like this, they're on the ground, they're taking their hooves and their toes and they're clearing this out. And that's what a lot of people think about scrapes. What we found with analyzing scrapes for many years and using mock scrapes since the mid 2000s is that rarely do bucks actually make a scrape. They rarely actually paw the ground and make a scrape and, and rough this area up. And hence the name scrape, they're scraping, but really they're not scraping. We find that probably 95% of the year, and yes, the entire year, deer are actually visiting these licking branches but they're not scraping. So you'd come to this right here, you don't even know that bucks are coming into this scrape or that they used it in the past, when really they're walking through and utilizing this as a form of communication. And they do that year after year, month after month, and they're leaving their scent on this, their own scent. And so when you think about it, they're not actually urinating in the scrape very often. So that eliminates most urine-based mock scrape attractants. Obviously a buck is not lifting his leg up and peeing on the licking branch right here. If they were scraping all the time, you know, we find they're hitting this, the mock scrape uh, month after month, every week of the year. But if it was all urine based and they had to pee on here to make a scrape or does or fawns or bucks, then they wouldn't hit this very often because outside of the rut and the extreme portions of the rut, and even the peak rut, a lot of times they're leaving these alone. They're just passing through and they sniff this licking branch right here. So really, again, no urine-based mock scrape scents. And so what we see often is when a buck first comes to the scrape, he doesn't come in, and even during the rut, he doesn't come in and, and uh, use his toes and clean this out. What he does do though, is he looks straight at this hanging vertical vine and he comes in and he goes right up to it. What he's doing is leaving his preorbital gland scent, his glands around his nose and eyes, he's leaving that scent on this branch as a form of communication. Lots of deer that come by can smell other deer that have been here. And if you don't think that that happens, think about a human fingerprint. If I just grab those leaves down there, those deer would come in here. We can't see that we left scent. There's not a lot of scent there. And that's why I always talk about even hiding your scent. If you're in a tree and me, sweaty myself, walking to a stand is blowing scent at deer, that's gotta be an incredibly strong scent to them. But just to leave a fingerprint on a leaf, they can smell that, let alone beagles. Rabbit runs by, no snow, no rain, beagles come out. The good beagles just turn the exact way the rabbit went and they do that just by scent. We go by a bread bakery, we smell bread. Deer go by the bread bakery, they smell the ingredients of the bread and how much of each ingredient is in there. Not a measurement of course, but they could probably rank them from strongest to not so strong and uh and their their nose is that effective we can't understand so we have fawns in a video a long time ago where they're just dancing these fawns are less than two months old the scrape is only a few days old we already had a dozen deer hitting that scrape including bucks and does so these fawns are coming up to the scrape and they're excited they're jumping around going back to sniff it imagine their little brains and with no experience trying to process all the scents that are on that licking branch and that leads me to the number one scent it isn't fake tarsal gland or fake preorbital gland or urine something like that it's the scent the deer actually leave naturally now when we come in here we first make a scrape we rough this up right here i'll also urinate in it and I think it's a visual at first, and we're just trying to get that scrape established. We have deer typically hit the scrapes within a day to two days when we put them out and we rough that, that area up. They're coming in because of the visual here, and then they come in and, oh, there's a vine. They leave their scent on it. Every deer that comes by leaves their scent on it. We put it right in the middle of the trail so they can leave their scent on it. We want bucks, does, and fawns to leave their scent. And when they leave that gland scent on there, the preorbital gland scent, the worst thing we could do is apply another form of commercially made scent that would potentially cover that up. And let's say it is really good tarsal or uh, preorbital gland scent that we could put on here from a live animal. Some way that that secretion could be actually bottled and sold. That's just one deer. And you notice when you have that scent, it's a spray, it's a gel, it's a, it's a lot. It's an excess of what they normally would leave on here. I would venture a guess that when they leave scent on here, you can't even tell it's been left. It's still dry. It's still clean. So 
when you apply a bottle of something and it's let alone a spray or something you're just covering up the natural scent there's no better scent than you can have than actual natural scent on mock scrapes now the scent companies out there won't like me seeing that i've turned down sponsorships from some monetary plus product it's not something i believe in because we've been making these scrapes for 17 18 years and deer come to them they leave their preorbital gland scent and that's all you need it's pretty easy we rely on these to take an inventory of bucks at every stand location and that's why i recommend only making mock scrapes in front of a stand location within bow shot in fact every bow stand that you should you have should have a mock scrape buy it ours do and we always have a spot for a camera nearby that camera is critical it gives us an inventory of everything here but sign you can come in here especially when it gets into the rut they are going to work that scrape but they're going to leave rubs other sign around here tracks that they've been in the area but rest assured if we allow a combination of deer to leave their preorbital gland scent on this vine right here, then it's going to become active and it's going to define movement. And that's what's critical. We want movement defined by this mock scrape. That's why if there's a mock scrape out of bow shot about 50 yards that way or this way, somewhere out of the way where it could potentially pull a mature buck that's cruising away from our stand location, then you just simply cut it down because more scrapes on your property does not attract more bucks no different than more water holes on your property attracts more bucks instead water holes mock scrapes they define buck movement bucks are already here for other factors you've been working on the habitat or you've scouted great habitat on public land so the bucks are here and you're using them to find to define movement we actually have a exodus render cell cam right there right up on that big old white oak and we actually have a lift too which we get video from right over here we had venti come by this becomes a hub of activity so even if they don't leave we have water holes i've shot monster bucks over a water hole where the buck walked 10 feet away and the reason he was there he was just cruising for the scent that's left in the area so the mock scrape becomes a focal point we had venti come right up here we were actually working on a water hole probably about five six hundred yards away so i think we kicked him out of a bedding area which it's early it's not you know a month before the season when that happened and uh he came up to here he took a look back and then he hightailed it this way and got out of here so we expect him to be back but we'll know he's back because we have the the cell camera right there and we know he'll be back because this represents a hub of activity in the area where a lot of bucks does and fawns will continually hit this on a daily basis our stand location is right over there about 25 yards we have to add it still we'll come in from the back we hard, hardly have any shooting lanes to clear so we'll get that out here in the next two weekends and we'll have a shot at this logging trail behind it the mock scrape we'll be able to shoot both cameras if we you know that's how close it is to the stand we have the cameras hidden this is one up on a junky box elder this is on a big wide white white oak so they don't look at the camera they're not spooked by it in any way and again when you think about it the way bucks behave with scrapes they're just marking their territory you know it's something to show after they leave that scent on here we have many bucks including eileen kermit last year on another scrape but when they come in here and they leave their scent with their preorbital gland they actually move their antlers around the scrape so they don't touch this they know exactly how wide their antlers are they move it around and they keep going forward we have video of that over and over again in hard horn and in velvet so it's not like they're wary of hitting their velvet on there they just move it around they just left their scent i almost look at it as a sacred thing so why don't you out there treat it as a sacred know that you're not going to use you know on the olden days you had those scent drippers that would drip urine on this deer don't again bucks don't pee with their leg pointed up in the air and, and squirting up in the air they'd pee on this but they rarely do think of it as a sacred location in the woods where a lot of deer are communicating the worst thing you could do is take a commercial scent spray it on here use some kind of gel dust powder whatever it might be and cover up the natural scent that's accumulating for all from all the deer that walk by so treat it like a sacred area like a mature buck would let that accumulation of scent take place just real quick we urge you using a vine that's three quarter inches into one inch in diameter it's about waist to belly high right in the middle of the trail and I've even seen some fancy hangers you know people make from a cedar post 
The problem is if that cedar post is this far away, bucks really want to be able to spin around this entire area and move all the way around the scrape. You don't want any brush, any trees, any logs. Make sure your mock scrape is in the middle of the trail, not off to the edge like a traditional branch. A traditional licking branch would be right here. Bucks would come over and hit it. No does, no fawns. Get it out here in the center of the trail. Let sun accumulate. Trees, if it's sacred, every deer that walks by will come up and sniff it. And you'll be on the way to not only figuring out what's the best scent for a mock scrape that you can use this year, but also defining mature buck movement for any time of the year because again, 365 days a year, mature bucks are hitting our scrapes and we enjoy watching that process play out, not only during the hunting season, right in front of our tree stand, but all year long. I'm excited to tell you guys about my latest web class. It's how to plant food plots, how to design your food plot program, and it covers everything. And really there's 30 videos, over 10 hours, 11 hours of footage, workbook hats, you know, all that stuff on top of it. I urge you to check out the link, but I cover five main areas, critical food plot concepts, where to plant, how to create, what to plant, and finally how to plant. It takes you through that step by step so you can make your own decisions that apply to you and build a great high quality food plot program this year, whether you have decades of experience or no experience at all.